Hiya. You know, Can they just interview uh, you and Barbara Lee? Please? Can they just do that? Can they just interview you and Barbara Lee on Afghanistan? I only want people well, you know, I, who I, are right. I'm on air, and, uh, you know, I, I notify everybody when I'm on air. There, There's a lot of punditry out there who are very, very deeply invested in continuing the theme that this uh, evacuation is a disaster. Yeah. And as you know me, it doesn't matter who I work for. I, I, cannot, I can't lie about something that I actually have empirical data on. Yeah. And this operation is called a non-combatant evacuation operation. It is essentially a rescue mission. And uh, there were people out there in the first two days who were calling this uh, a, the greatest military disaster in history. Sure. Which yeah. is interesting. For those who have never seen, okay, who've never seen the movie Dunkirk, yeah, right, yeah. or read a history book in their life, uh, you know, uh, I'm looking at you, Gallipoli. Uh, there, yeah. there have been real military disasters. Yeah, this is not one of them. What we have here is we are carrying out what arguably will be the largest non-combatant evacuation in American military history. Uh, that's na that includes natural disasters and military withdrawals. And apparently, from what it looks like, it's successful. Yeah. Uh, but you wouldn't know that if you watch coverage on the news today. It's uh, insane. CNN was on last night where I'm at. And uh, they every time something positive happens, like the massive airlift goes out, they juxtapose it with, it's a humanitarian disaster because women are having babies on flights. And in fact, a woman has not had a baby on a flight. A woman had a baby on a runway in Germany yeah. last yeah. week. And they are showing it as an example of how horrible and chaotic things are. Um, I've been I spent 30 plus years doing this game. I have seen women give birth in gun battles. Uh, you know, in Iraq, there was a suicide bombing. A woman gave birth. So not everything we see is what it is. What we yeah. need to do is look at the strategic picture, which is what Joe Biden is doing. And apparently we are being successful. Thank Some you. things we are not learning. Maybe they don't won't need us to learn right now so we don't tip off the Taliban. Well, yes, thank you. And I, Ron Klain had tweeted yesterday. This was almost he said almost 60,000 evacuees out of 3 a.m. Eastern today with multiple plans landing and taking off every hour. Amazing heroic work by our armed forces who remain under terrorist threat in Kabul. And you just said 60,000 and counting. Well, as I said this morning, we are up to uh, I believe it's over 80 thousand uh, um and you just tweeted what happens if we succeed i'm sure peter baker and the new york times and the trump media will still insist this was the worst military catastrophe in all of history in fact it is on track to be the cleanest most orderly non-combatant evacuation ever i mean malcolm I, do, dare i have a moment of american patriotism here <laughs> i think we've had a zero american deaths and i have to tell you the pictures of american soldiers holding babies or taking newborn babies i mean I've had like a, I really a, a swelling of pride about our, our troops and what they're ap accomplishing. Why I, and, I don't you, for the life of me understand why the media is not giving them and the president the credit that they're due for this. And you should. And you should. And I heard just quite surprisingly this morning that the two congressmen, the Democrat, you know, Seth Moulton, who, uh. Uh, who, you know, I don't know Seth Bolton. All I know is that someone made a very interesting comment about. Now that Tulsi Gabbard's gone, there's a slot open. Yes, for, uh, you grandstander. Know, most obnoxious. Thank you. I, <laughs> I hadn't gotten to the story, Malcolm, just so people know what you're talking about. Two members of Congress secretly traveled to Kabul amid the ongoing evacuation uh, um, of Americans and U.S. allies. Seth Moulton and uh, Republican Peter Mejure. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yes, um, one senior administration official said it's as moronic as it is selfish. They're taking seats away from Americans and at-risk Afghans while putting our dip diplomats and service members at greater risk so they can have a moment in front of the camera. Uh, Pelosi had sent out a letter to House members saying the Department of Defense and state have requested members not travel to Afghanistan and the region during this time of, of danger. So they basically did that to, to also cast doubt on whether we can get these evacuations oh. done. Why do we have people rooting against America when America is Look, exceeding beyond all expectations right now? I suspect that tomorrow it's going to be Katie bar the door and every Republic. I mean, Ted Cruz, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, all the rest of them will be trying to fly into Kabul tomorrow. I mean, this is beyond disgusting. I've actually had to meet a congressional delegation that was unauthorized in southern Iraq that suddenly appeared out of nowhere. And I had to be taken off of my non, you know, NGO security work 
to go protect this guy who wanted to cruise around the restaurants of Basra. Mm. And then I had to go to the British and try to explain to them that this fool was here out of nowhere and that now the British Army had to had the responsibility to protect him, to get him up an eight-hour drive to Baghdad. These things are disruptive. Yeah. Don't come. It's yeah. as simple as that. And anybody who does go over there, you are taking a seat of a person whose life could be lost if because you came and got that yeah. seat. They're not. Look, these guys aren't flying back on United. They're not going back on a private charter. They're going back on U.S. military aircraft, and they're using the strength of their position as congressmen to do that. Yeah. But back to the to the big picture again. Yeah. Um, the 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 President Biden's operation thus far, pushing out to August thirty first, apparently is successful. So people are now have to change the goalpost, and the new goalpost that I heard yesterday. Uh, that was on CNN and other mainstream media organizations, was that um, the August 31st deadline will not be enough for us to evacuate all the Afghans. Who exactly are all the Afghans? Yeah. Look, we have a mission. The mission initially started out, we had 15,000 U.S. citizens in that country. There are operations and uh, that are going on, and I know they're going on, and if they are clandestine or secret, I don't want to know about them, Right. Yeah. I want them to go and get as many American citizens out of there as possible. We cannot take the 100,000 man Afghan army. Yeah. We cannot take the 50,000 people who were in the infrastructure of the Afghan government. Yeah. We can try to make an effort to get the NGOs, the NGO families. You have to remember, for every person that worked for us, yeah. there is probably six or seven people in the extended family spouse, on average two children, grandmother, uh, father and mother on both sides of the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and not to mention brothers and sisters. We're taking all of them. Yeah. I have done non-combatant evacuation operations. They are never orderly. This is yeah. not like yeah. Operation Eastern Exit in Somalia, where we had to fly SEALs into the embassy and literally have gun battles around yeah. to carry out a combat extraction of the staff. You're talking about removing people this is more on par with removing everyone out of um you know out of um uh, phuket thailand after the tsunami yeah. where the entire infrastructure is destroyed and everyone wants to leave we're pulling out everybody every american every brit yeah. every australian anyone that can present themselves as legitimately part of the alliance or oh. a foreigner or afghan that work with us we're doing it so yeah. let our armed forces do it, because you know why? Here's what we're good at, all right? And by the way, somebody wrote to me and said, I shout too much on this program. <laughs> this is the program oh, to shout Not enough, on. not enough you for how for how shouty things this. are. <laughs> the armed forces of the United States are not just an organization that is good at destruction. We are good at stabilizing chaos and carrying out organized operations in a method that civilians just aren't capable of doing. We are. And right now, I've, uh, you know, another theme that I heard this morning is U.S. forces are working at the gate with the Taliban. Hey, Taliban owns the country. Thank they you. They are the rulers. You, you they have, they, the Afghans surrendered the country to them. Yeah, you tw you tweeted, you said, as I was saying, the Taliban bought the tribes after Trump sold them the country. This is not that hard to understand. I was saying, Chuck Todd actually asked someone yesterday, oh, the CIA chief is in there talking to the Taliban. Is it appropriate that we're negotiating with the Taliban? A little too late, Chuck. Why yeah. don't you like, <laughs> acknowledge that this is how we got here, is only negotiating with the terrorists and letting 5,000 of them out, including the one that Pompeo made the deal with that's running the country. Oh, now it's the rude? Secretary to talk State to the Taliban. The, president of, the Secretary of State and the President of the United States and all levels of government were negotiating with the Taliban for the last two years. Why don't people say this when they get these ridiculous questions? Because I couldn't tolerate it. They should say, are you crazy? That's a stupid question. Are you aware we've been negotiating with the Taliban for the last two years? Yeah. We've been negotiating with the Taliban since 2001. Yeah. We talk to our enemies on the periphery so that they cannot become our enemies at some point. Right now, the Afghans have chosen. They have chosen at the tribal, district, and provincial level the Taliban. Now, those people who want to leave the country who are most at risk in retribution 
should be given the opportunity to do that. However, there are rumors going around Kabul that all you have to do is come to the gate and they will relocate you to the West as any kind of emigrant, yeah. economic refugee or political refugee. It's sorting out the 25 yeah. young men who weren't in the army who just want to fly to the West from the people who were yeah. in the Afghan well, special forces yeah. and working hand in hand with us and who are shooting Taliban who need to come out. Yeah, we got well, out the Afghan girls, you know, drone team, uh, yeah. you know, robotics team who had their face painted on the wall of the embassy. Yeah. Those people were in great, great yeah. danger. Well, Malcolm, can so I? We, yeah, I'm mm, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm good. No, I was going to say, I mean, I know from this personally, I don't know if you know, my sister has lived in pretty much all the stands, but her husband was, uh, my brother-in-law was stationed in Kabul. And so uh, she was not on that. She, uh, she and her son lived uh, back here then. But but he, he's hearing from everybody he ever knew trying to get out. So you're right. We can't. And he's, you know, he's obviously retired. So he's like, I can't, he, we can't get everybody out. It's people that worked with them way back. You know, he was an you know, attorney in privatizing the oil and gas, you know, government contract. But, you know, and they were saying the uncles, cousins, whatever, like we can't, you know, he wishes he could, but you're right, we can't get, and he said that would be illegal. They didn't work for me. They're just your relatives. So, I mean, we are in this situation where what you, what you said is correct, that we can't take everybody. Let's talk about what the nation of Afghanistan has the potential of being. And the Taliban, who were, we have been fighting for the last 20 years, they are all the senior management, the senior surviving leadership, are all men about my age, 58, 59, 60 years old. When they started fighting back in the early 1980s, yeah. uh, they were teenagers, or they were 10, 12 years old. They have lost generations of fighters. When they formed the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan last time, they made a choice to make it a wild militia place that would come down very hard. The country was barely under control under their rule. That The fact that you had northern tribes immediately flipped the day seven special forces or 15 special forces soldiers send up or CIA paramilitary send up, you just saw the reverse of that happen with the Taliban. In some places, 10, 15 Taliban came out of their suicide bomb safe houses, went to a provincial governor and took control of the entire province. Yeah, This is the people of Afghanistan have made a decision. The Taliban are the de facto rulers of that country. However, this time, I think they want a working country. And to do that, I mean, they have the traffic cops back on the streets of Kabul. They have, you know, uh, telling people to go back to school. Maybe they're a little more politically savvy this time. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to be North Korea. They want to be brought into the pantheon of modern states and have relationships with the states around them, including these talks they've just started with the Chinese. Yeah. But you know what? If we don't, if they don't do that, if they go back to just slaughtering every person who spoke with an American, then they're going to have to kill 38 million people. Yeah. I don't think they're that way. Yeah. Uh, just point one thing out. North Vietnam, when they took over Saigon in 1975, didn't know that within 10 years they'd be building Nike factories there. Mm. Yeah. OK. All right. We shall see. Real quick. Back to our uh, the number of real terrorism threat. That is domestic oh. terrorism here. I um, oh want to just get your take on where you think we are with January 6th. And obviously everybody's records being subpoenaed, including members of Congress. And then this upcoming Trump's closest allies distancing themselves from a planned rally for imprisoned U.S. Capitol rioters that has Washington, D.C. police on edge. September 18th, rally organizers are calling for the release of the rioters they call political prisoners. Uh, police department on high alert against Proud Boys involvement, etc. other street violence. But, uh, of course, the upper ranks of Trump world trying to distance themselves. So wh where, uh, yeah, where are we on January 6th? Who should be nervous and should we be nervous about September 18th? Well, I'm going to be in D.C. September 18th, so you don't have to be nervous. OK, uh, let me tell you, he's on it. <laughs> he's going to be me with probably three or four thousand National Guardsmen. Uh, you know, the, the right now, anybody that wants to go in that city is going to be met with a wall of force to represent just what the United States really thinks of them. And what are they going to do? Go to the D.C. city jail? You beat, injured and caused policemen to commit suicide. Every cop in that city is going to want a piece of those guys. Uh, you know, they all know Mike Fanone. And uh, now Mike Fanone has made uh, the force famous. 
Uh, <laughs> they are not going to tolerate anything. Here's what I predict. I predict about 25 people will come there with signs calling them political prisoners. But where did this whole theme of them as political prisoners come from? It came from Russia Today and Vladimir Putin. Ah, there we are. Our old friends again. Vladimir Putin himself said that the people who were arrested were political prisoners of the United States. Yeah. They are I thought that sounded familiar. Yeah, Putin. Russian oh. intelligence themes. But, you know, Matt Getz is going to be there, so that mm. ought to be fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. We are over time as usual. Love you, Malcolm Nance. Thank you for uh, what you, all you do for America, yes. sir. God That's bless. Malcolm. God bless the United States. Bye-bye.